Hey everyone, welcome, welcome to a class with Jelly Arts and myself. My name is Tanya and we have a few moderators with us as well. We have Luan from the Jelly Arts headquarters who will be monitoring chat in case I miss any questions. I'm going to do my best to uh, have a look at questions as well, but most of the time I might be talking uh, and uh, your view will be looking down at my hands and the gel printing as well. Um, uh, let me just quickly introduce myself. My name is Tanya and I'm based here in the UK and uh, I am a brand ambassador for Jelly Arts and I teach online classes for them. I make videos and uh, make sure to follow us on social media and on YouTube as well. We share a lot of content on a daily basis and uh, be sure to join us on social media and tag us and tag Michaels as well if you are making anything in this class. Um, so this is a class uh, on um, by Jelly Arts. So what we're going to be doing today is gel printing. So like I said, I'm based over here in the UK. Uh, why doesn't I can see that there's lots of people joining us from uh, America from Texas, from France, from New York, from Wisconsin. Hi and welcome. And Marsha is here as well. Marsha is my fellow brand ambassador and she will also be answering some questions uh, as well. So you can direct any questions you have in the chat and Luann might also uh, stop me and ask me some questions as well in case I miss anything. So I'm just going to switch my cameras over so that you can uh see what i'll be working on today so today i'm going to be making some uh christmas uh cards uh you don't necessarily have to uh, make christmas cards but you can use the same principles to make your own creations like uh, for example uh these are just christmas cards that i made you can also do some fruit inspired art as well this is going to be a video that uh, I'm going to be working on for Jelly Arts in the next few weeks or so. So make sure to follow us as well. So today we are, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we're going to be doing some gel printing. So, uh, oh, I see a fellow uh, Brit here in chat as well. It's, it's 8 p.m. here, so that's why I've got my bright artificial lights on. So forgive me if there's a bit of a glare. Um, so we're going to be making these cards. Uh, all of the products that I'm using today are available on the Michaels website. And Luann will be sharing some uh, links as well on where you can buy these products. So the two main uh, products that you can buy on the Michaels website of Jelly Arts are the 8 by 10 plate. Uh, which is a gel plate, which is made of a synthetic material. It's nice and squidgy. I personally love how it feels. Um, and we also have a five by seven, so a five inch by seven inch plate. So this is the smaller of the two that uh, of the plates. And also we have some mini tools as well uh, from Jelly Arts. Mine are very, very well loved <laughs> as you can see but if you wanted to you could clean these as well and I'll talk more about how you can clean uh, things like this uh, during the class as well so if there's anyone in this class who is a beginner gel printer please do let me know don't be afraid to ask any questions and we will do our best to answer them so I'm going to start with the basics so I'm going to be working primarily on the five by seven. Let me just make some space. I'm starting off with a pristine surface. And as you'll see, as we go along, this is gonna get absolutely covered in paint and messes. And pretty soon I'll just end up with that much space. So um, I think everyone can hear me clearly. So I'm going to continue. So with gel printing, the very basic principle is what you need is some paint. I'm using some Liquitex soft body acrylics. You can use any acrylic paints that you have in your stash. How they will behave on your gel plate will depend on how thick your paint is, what brand it is, 
and how dry your weather is as well. So it depends a lot on uh, different factors. So, and sometimes it can also depend from person to person, even if they're using the same brand, it can behave in a different way because you know we apply paint in a different way. So to start off, I am going to take, do a very, very basic print. And what you need to do is you just take a little bit of paint, a little goes a long way, and I'm using a brayer. And again, as I mentioned, uh, all of these products are available on the Michael website. This is a speedball brayer that I'm using. It's a soft rubber brayer, which I, which is one of my preferred brayers to use. But again, you can use any brayer that you have. And again, it depends on personal preference. And so I've got my wet paint on the gel plate. And I'm going to take one of my mini tools and all you do is you can just very, very lightly uh, scrape the paint away. And that will leave like a design in your plate. So while the paint is still wet, I can then put a print. And I'm rubbing the back of the paper very lightly. And then I will pull my print. So I've got very, very little paint left on my gel plate and it's almost dry, which tells me that I used just the right amount of paint on my gel plate. And that, ladies and gentlemen, that took me literally, what, two minutes to pull? And that is your very basic gel print. So again, it's about what kind of paints you use how, and how much you paint you apply. Um, one of the most common questions we get asked is how much paint to use? And I say start with a little and then experiment and then you can add some more. Because sometimes if you have too much paint on your plate, then it can, uh, sometimes you pull, you can pull maybe two or three prints as well. And I prefer pulling prints like this. See, there's nothing left on my plate. It's just dried on there. So I just did that to show you that this is all dry. And what for this whole session, I'm not going to uh, clean my plate at all in between prints because we want to get all of that yummy dried paint, which is going to get pulled up uh, while on uh, subsequent prints. So I generally find that the less paint I use, the crisper my designs are, and the more uh, paint I am able to pull up if I'm doing like designs like this. So something like this is like really simple, effective, easy to do. And you can use all sorts of household items to create texture in the paint. And uh, you can, uh, just as long as you're not using anything sharp. So these are like uh, slightly rubbery, plasticky uh, like tools. And I really love using them. They come in many different designs as well. And I personally love using them for other things like doing uh, scraping paint as well, which is one of my favorite things to do these days. So what other things can you use to create texture in your gel plate? So you can use things like uh, pill packaging. You can create your own plates as well. Uh, this is just some cardboard that I put some string on uh, to create texture. You can use old recycled packaging. And uh, this is like a really thick box that I peel the top off to reveal this honeycomb pattern inside. And these are two foam uh, stamps that I made. And if you wanted to, you could watch the replay of Marsha's uh, live that she did on Michael's a few weeks ago where she made her own DIY foam uh, stamps as well. I highly recommend you checking that class out. I really loved how she did that. Um, and you can use like all sorts of things. I'll, I'll run through, I've got a little pile next to me over here out of sight uh, to show you different kinds of prints that you can pull. So our focus is going to be on creating uh, silhouettes. 
or you can create collages as well. So th these are like a combination of uh, collage and silhouette. So what I'm going to do first is we're going to do a layered print. So we're going to start off with a lighter color first as our base. And uh, uh, can you use your brayer on? Yeah, you can use your brayer as well. It's about personal preference. Uh, whether you want to use your uh, brayer or, or your hand, it can also depend on uh, sometimes some, uh, some of our customers have mobility issues. They find using a brayer is easier rather than using their hands. And so I am just put a really thin layer of paint down on my plate. So this was uh, yellow medium azo. This is the liquid tech soft body acrylic. And um, guys, if any of you are directing any uh, first direct messages at me, it would be best to direct them in the main chat. So if there's any uh, questions, uh, I don't want to miss them. So if you just direct them at the main chat rather than at me, then they will get answered quicker. So I've just taken like a, a really old uh, piece of bubble wrap that I have, which is covered in paint. <laughs> and I have just put that down. I don't know if you can see that it's left us a slight impression in the paint. And while the paint is still wet, I am going to put my print. So there's a couple of things that you can do if your paint is uh, dying to gloss. You can um, you can add some extended mediums as well. There's uh, several different kinds available on the Michael's website. Marsha will be able to um, you'll be able to recommend some because I I I think she used like an extended uh, medium in her last class. And here you can see it pulled up some of that paint that was sitting on the surface underneath. And I am left with almost no paint on my plate. So that basically tells me that I am doing something somewhat right, that I'm using the right amount of paint so that it's lifting all of that delicious dry paint that was on there. So I've got my first layer down. And because I was using a really thin layer, it's already dry. It's already dry so that I can work on it. Uh, I can apply a second layer on it as well. So I'm gonna set this to the side and I want to do a contrasting print. But before I do that, what we're gonna do is I'm going to create a stencil. So just using a scrap piece of paper. Now, uh, in school, we used to make paper snowflakes all the time. <laughs> and there's like tons of videos online on how you can make your own uh, snowflakes. I'm just gonna do a really simple design today. And what I'm using is just some simple copy paper or printed paper. And I've cut it into a square. And I'm folding it diagonally once to create a triangle, and then again to create another triangle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly fold that over just a little bit like that, and then overlap this part as well. So this is just like a really simple way of making a paper snowflake. It's a, there's so many like amazing designs that uh, you can see online. I'm just doing a really basic one just to show you guys the principle. And then what you do is you flip it over, folded it over like so, so that both the flaps overlap each other. And then I'm gonna twist it over and I'm just gonna cut off that bottom half, discard that. I can actually use those as uh, more silhouettes as well. And while this is folded over, I can just cut some more triangles into it to create my little 
apertures or holes for my snowflake. And what I'm doing is I'm making sure that there's a folded edge over here and this side isn't folded as much. So I'm making sure that there's parts that are still connected there so that the design doesn't come apart. So do we have any questions? Uh, Tanya, no, we're good. We're good? Yeah, I think you covered the question where somebody asked, why aren't you using your roller on the back of the print? But you answered that already. Um, and Marsha has put some links in for the uh, mediums that she likes to use. And also the link for her previous class on stamping. So Brilliant. I think we're good. Brilliant. We're just watching. So I'm, I'm not doing a very complicated design. You don't have to cut it by hand if you have a uh, digital die cutting machine uh, or like a, a manual die cutting machine. And if you have snowflake dies or snowflake digital dies, then you can easily cut them out uh, with a more durable material. Uh, like uh, you could use uh, one of the films by Graphics, which is also available on the Michaels website, or you could recycle some plastic packaging as well, if your machine can take it, or you could even uh, just use a craft knife and uh, cut out your own stencil uh, design, which you can use over and over again if it's made of plastic. Actually, you could uh, reuse the plastic uh, film that the, the sheets that the gel plate comes packaged in. You could create stencils with those. And all you need is just copy paper to uh, store your gel plate in, inside the clam packaging. So <laughs> pretty much if you're like me, you're going to start looking at all sort of packaging around the house and thinking, can I, can I use this in gel printing? I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, it's a problem. It's a problem. So that is my very, very basic snowflake design. And uh, again, it didn't take very long. And I think that it's nice and uh, effective and simple enough that I can use it to create my gel print with. So if you wanted to have more of the color that you're using, then you create like larger holes. You cut out larger holes for your snowflake. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a second layer on top. And I think I'm gonna go with, uh, with the magenta. So this is quinacridone crimson. Again, this is a liquitex soft body. And I am going to just put down a few drops of the pink again. And again, my hands are covered because once I start working with paint, it doesn't take very long for it to get messy, but messy hands, happy heart. What I say is like, if, if my hands are messy, then that means that I'm unhappy, Tanya. So I might have a bit too much paint on there, but that's all right, because I want to make sure that the paint transfers through the stencil. So if I lay my stencil down, you can cover the whole thing. Or shall we cover the whole thing? Let's do that. And then I can just use my pencil to my uh, scissors to gently press it down. So again, when you're working with sharp objects on a gel plate, just be really, really careful. Because once you get a cut on there, then it, it's really hard to get a nice print afterwards. So I am just going to lay that on top. It's not going to be properly lined up, I think because I didn't place uh, another piece of paper underneath to line it up with. But because we're going to be chopping these prints up, it doesn't matter so much that they're not lining up. So at this point, I'm just making sure I'm pressing nicely and firmly. 
to transfer that change through. Here is what the paint looks like. So I think I deliberately chose a paint that contrasted really well with the color underneath and make sure that when you're using the second color, the second color is opaque enough or dark enough uh, to cover the color underneath. So when you look at paints, sometimes you might see, like it, it will tell you how opaque they are. Or if they don't, it's worth experimenting with the paints. And if you, I'm the kind of person who really likes a lot of sharp contrast in my paints. I love bright colors, in case you guys didn't notice. <laughs> um, so this is why I deliberately choose colors which I know are going to uh, pop against each other. So that's, actually I can cut this down and I can create a card with this. So I'm just going to set this to side and then we can start working on some more designs. And because this is made of paper, it's just slightly flimsy. But if you wanted to, you can actually cut this down as well and reuse this and use just Mod Podge or some clear uh, gel medium and apply it to a card as well. So another thing you can do to create silhouettes on your gel plates are, so this is one thing that I like to do, is I like to place, actually, let me just cut this down because this is seven inches by seven inches. And if I just mark this and cut this down so that's the exact same size as my gel plate, I can show you guys how you can create your own center your cards if you wanted to do like a direct print on there. So I've got a piece of paper that is roughly five inches by seven inches. It's just copy paper. And then I have a piece of a, a card blank, which I'm just going to place on there. And I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to mark out very, very roughly, mark out where the card is. And then inside this, you basically created a very simple template for yourself. And then inside this, you can cut out your design or you, know, you could use your craft knife to cut out um, a, a design or like a tree or anything like that. What I'm going to do is I'm just taking a small bowl. You can use a compass or if you if you're using a slightly more sturdier material, you could use dye as well. But I'm keeping things simple for the sake of this demonstration. And I have just created my circle there. And what you can do is you can create like a, a, a multiple templates as well. And then I'm just going to fold this over. And I am just going to cut out my circle. From the middle. So it doesn't, it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be like a, a I've, I've done like all sorts of things. You could do fruit shapes. I've done like a, ah, oh, this is one. Actually, let's see what we can do. I should have done a proper, I shouldn't have folded in half, but never mind. Never mind. Let's do an A3 size card instead. So I'm just going to mark this out so that I know where to line my card up. So this is going to be like a, a little, let's do another one. Shall we? So this is another one of those classic cases of do as I say, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> but never mind. Never mind. Where did my paper go? So 
let's check out our wall. 5 by 7 piece of paper again. Is, the right size. is there any questions? How do you clean your gel plate? So uh, I generally use just some water. I just use some water and a microfiber cloth to clean my uh, gel plates. If it's like really heavy duty cleaning that I need to do, then I will use uh, baby wipes. And uh, another one of the questions I get commonly asked is how to clean. Uh, I, I promised that I would tell you guys how you would clean this mess. Because I don't mind. I think that these, these have become like really beautiful. <laughs> uh, like pieces of art in themselves after being covered in paint. But if you want to clean them, uh, you get something called Murphy's soap in, uh, in America. Or over here uh, in Europe, you can get something called bio, biotech. And all you do is you would soak something like plastic like this. Don't soak your gel plates in the stuff. And uh, then after a couple of hours of it just sitting there, the paint just slides right off. So again, I drew my circle and then I am just drawing my outline of my A3 card. And let's not fold it over like last time, <laughs> like I did. Let's just make a small notch like that and then cut it out properly. Because this is what happens when you do things in a hurry. And uh, that Murphy's oil and biotech, it cleans uh, things like paint brushes that have had paint dried on it or medium dried on it. Uh, it cleans stencils really well. It cleans these uh, mini tools really well as well. But when you're cleaning your gel plate, I would advise on just using either baby wipes or water, uh, some kitchen Tanya, powder. Yes. Tanya, we also use hand sanitizer and yes. with a paper towel and baby oil. And somebody else just asked, do you put something on the back of your plate to keep it from moving? So uh, you can either use a glass mat or I've just got a piece of uh, really long white paper underneath. And that just stops the gel plate from moving around because the gel plate is basically, because it's so squidgy, it just grabs onto whatever surface you sit it on. So if the surface underneath isn't going to move around, then your gel plate isn't going to go anywhere. It just sticks in place. Like I'm just giving it a, a slight slap and it's not going anywhere. So, but unless if you have like a piece of paper underneath or if you still got it on the plastic, it's, it's still going to move around, but you can, you can use tape uh, underneath the uh, paper. So I've got my template finally. <laughs> after my little mistake. So I've got my template here and I've cut a circular shape because I want to make, uh, over here in the UK, they call them Christmas bubbles, but I believe in the US they call them ornaments. I think they're called ornaments in the US, but over yes. here they call, yes. them, <laughs> they call them bubbles over here. It took me the longest time to understand. I kind of like bubbles. <laughs> So do forgive me, English isn't my native language. And sometimes in one language continuously throws me off. So I've just used uh, two different uh, paints. I've used the yellow and the blue. And then let's use, actually use the pill packaging to create some impressions on there. And then I'm just going to use this to see what part of the print I want to take. Just going to place that down. And very quickly, while the paint is still wet, I am going to press that down to 
going to lift the flap. Okay, just make sure that I get a good print. Now I have a feeling, I have a feeling I might not get enough paint on there because maybe my layer was too thin, but let's see. Yeah, it's it's like a it's like a uh, special kind of plastic. It's really soft and squidgy, and this is why I'm able to like pull a print with my hands, or you could do it with a brayer as well. So let's see if I was able to pull my print. Oh, hello, and there we go. I was able to pull my print really really well. So this is really great for something like. Uh, if you wanted to do just do like one layer cards instead of doing like a collage on it, I just had a pencil line on there, so I'm just doing that all. And that was actually quite successful. So if you wanted to, you could keep building up layers on this. And because this is a slightly thicker cardstock that I'm using, you can uh, keep using this over and over again. Uh, you can use a clear uh, piece of plastic as well. Uh, but I prefer using printer paper because then it just shows up really well on your while you're doing your print. So I can actually reuse this as well. Shall we do another layer on top of this or shall we let it be? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? I'm open to suggestions. Actually, what kind of color can we do? Can we put a white on top? You know, I don't want to ruin this because I really love how you can actually see the texture of the pill packaging. So more, leave it alone, <laughs> leave it, okay, back off, <laughs> back off. So maybe let's do another one and then we can do another layer on top. So let's start with the magenta, the, uh, the quinacridone crimson again. Maybe let's just add a touch of white to make it a little bit different. I really love the nozzles on these uh, liquid text. I just adore the consistency of them, but not everyone likes them because I know some people on the team don't like it as much as I do, but I adore it. And Gel printing and what uh, brands of paints or mediums you use or what tools you use can be a lot about personal preference. And again, can depend on where you live as well, because how humid uh, where you are can it is can really affect what kind of prints you get, what kind of paint. Uh, how your paint will behave as well. So do I have another comment? So let's try lining it up. So let's hope that I have enough paint on there, but it's not a big deal because I'm going to layer another print on top. So uh, this class, as, as it was mentioned before, this class is being recorded and it should be up on the Michael's YouTube channel with, within like 48 hours, but sometimes it's up way sooner than that. So that was using the uh, handmade foam stamp that I had. So that created some really lovely texture on there. And as much as I don't want to cover it, but I want to show you guys that how easy it is to just line that up, just using this template that you've made. And just look at all those delicious paint layers on there as well. And if you wanted to, you could cut this up and I'm actually gonna cut this up afterwards. So what color shall we do on top? Shall we do a green or let's do a blue? touch of white to it. So I'm only using six colors. 
which is from a set, or you can buy these individually as well. And uh, one of the comments that I get uh, said to me a lot is, is that you get so overwhelming to know what to do. And one of the things I suggest is, is like, uh, reduce the amount of supplies that you have out. And that will allow you to have less of a choice and it, you will have less of decision fatigue. So I'm just using the mini tools because I love creating these swirls. And I can do this where I want to have that. So you don't have to have the uh, template the same size as your plate. Just make sure that you're putting it in the same place over and over again. And the basic principle is that it should line up every time. So I'm just going to lift the flap up off this apron card and just rub the back of it. So Tanya, you have a question. Where does the foam come from that you use to make your st your cool stamps? Well, this, this was the foam was recycled as well. I got a package that happened to have some really thick foam. Um, but if you watch the uh, replay of the video that Marsha did where she uh, shared how to make her own foam stamps, there will be some links to uh, some supplies that Michael's have as well. Yeah. So it's the, is it the adhesive backed foam sheets? Ah, uh, see, I placed it upside down and it didn't link. Oh dear. But I should have marked it which side up it was because it's not equally spaced. But I will do that one again. I that one again. Um, yeah, you can get adhesive uh, back sheets as well, which I believe are available on the Michael's website, which makes it easier to stick them down. Then you don't have to, uh, then you don't have to create your own uh, sort of sticker backing with them. Yeah, Marsha put the link in for the phone, which is great. I'm telling you that that uh, that that class with Marsha is definitely well worth watching. So I'm going to place that down there like that, and I am going to get another card. Line that up, and I'm just going to put a pencil mark saying that this side is up. So that will tell me to not place it upside down like I did before. So again, this is another one of those cases of do as I say, <laughs> not as I do. So we've got that. Oh, and I've got some of that paint lifting up from the previous print as well. That makes me happy. So that side is up. So I'm gonna mark that as well. Or you could that side is down as well, depending on how your brain works. But my brain likes this side up more than this side down. Do the paint down and then do that swirl and get my template in. This part looks a bit pretty. Place that down there and then lift that up. So you can, my principle on uh, when we get asked on what can we print on is I would pretty much print on anything that doesn't move. So <laughs> I could print on glass as well. The only thing that we say is that please don't use photo paper. 
these 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 don't use photo paper because there's something about photo paper and the way it reacts to the gel plate and the acrylic paint that causes it to stick to uh, the gel plate. And this is, see, this is when I do everything right and properly and think about what I'm doing rather than talking, is when you get everything to line up. And then all you need to do is you just need to add a, like a simple printed sentiment. If you have some stamps, you can do some stamping here. And to create the ornament part, how are we doing for time? We've still got 20 minutes, oh, brilliant. So we can create some, we can create some trees to Lewis as well, which will be fun. So, the one that I really, really love this one, didn't we? So is this dry? Yes, it is. And I'm just gonna turn this over and I'm going to draw a really, really rough, like a, a topper. Kind of thing that you know connects the uh, the ornament, you know, like the holder thing, holder thingy, very technical term. And just gonna sketch it out by hand. And again, you don't have to do that. There's like lots of templates online that you can uh, download and print out and download off like a digital die cutting store as well. If you wanted to make something, uh, if you didn't want to draw it by hand, but I am very much a very hands on person. Uh, but yeah, you can pretty much print on anything on anything uh, that that will take the paint. I put my bubble shape here. And all you need to do is just put that on with a drop of glue. And just put some some matte uh, medium inside a little drop or bottle to do that. Let's me do some. That's just stuck down. It's a very, very simple card that you could uh, make yourself or just do it with the uh, kids as well. It's a perfect project to do with kids. It might be a bit complicated to do like a, a one layer card to create a silhouette. So all you, all you need to do is you need to have like your print, just cut out a circle and just stick it down on a card blank and just add your decorations as needed. And that's your card done. Because once you start printing, it's going to be really, really hard and I guarantee hard to stop. And I guarantee you, you will not stop at just one print. And pretty soon you're gonna keep, keep saying to yourself, oh, just one more print, just one more print. And you're going to end up with a giant pile of cards. And then you, the, you have the sweet problem of what to do with all those prints. And uh, cards i find are the best way the best way to use up all your uh prints so let's just do let's do another card let's do another one i haven't done a like a nice christmasy green so i'm using Hocus Green Hue Permanent Liquitex Soft Body. And then I'm using the Yellow Medium Azul. So again, I'm just sticking to, I just, there's, there's actually a black as well. I haven't used black. So I basically, a black in the, in the set of six. So I haven't used more than five colors to do this print. Hey, Tanya, Tanya, did yes. you, I'm sorry to interrupt, but did you already um, repeat the name of the blue? Somebody's asking for that. Yeah, the blue is absolutely gorgeous. I don't blame you for asking. It's the ultramarine blue, red shade. Thank you. It's, it's one of my favorite shades of blues. It's just, it's gorgeous. So I'm using one of my 
uh, DIY foam stamps. It's just this really simple one with these lines on it because you just you can't go wrong with lines. Can you? Um, actually, can we use this food packaging as well? So this is just some fruit packaging I have. This is now thoroughly covered in paint that I can pull a print on. Because I just I just adore how the print turns out. It just looks like fish fish scales or as as someone who looked at a print that I did, she said it looks like mermaid scales. So pretty much you're going to have a problem like mine. And he, my poor husband, he has to check with me before he can throw away anything, any interesting packaging. Because then I always think, oh, I'm going to plan to do something with it. So I've got this initial print, but because this is plastic, I've still got some wet paint on there. And I can pull a second print. Let's see if that's not dry too much. Because the it, because the the packaging was made of plastic, it will it would absorb the paint. Rather, the paint will be left on the plate. So the kinds of materials you use will affect how much paint is left on your plate. So a lighter print, but I just love that. So you that results in a really ghostly print, which is perfect as a beginning point, as a first layer for more subsequent layers. So let's do that blue again, because I seem to have a weakness for this blue. So it's again the ultramarine blue red shade. I was going to make it as a tree silhouette. But who says trees have to be green? Right. Hey, Tanya. Yes. Somebody Tanya. just asked about if they could use rubber stamps. Here, let me find it. Yes, yes, you can use rubber stamps as well. Regular rubber stamps. Yes. yes. You can what about keeping them stamps. clean? Sorry? What about keeping them clean? Like, what is it? To keep yeah, them you can you can leave them clean as well. You mean without doing any texture on them? Yeah, you can do that. You can do that. But because I'm doing like multi-layer prints, I like to do texture because then all of this is gonna get covered otherwise. But if if I wanted to, I could just do like a, a plain pull just with paint. Do you like it with rubber stamps? Do you recommend using paint or uh, stamping inks or anything else? Do you have you a can use both. You can use both. So if you visit um, the uh, Jelly Arts social media, Instagram page, as well as mine, as well as Marsha's or where I get coops and you will see lots of videos where we've uh, done gel printing with with inks as well as uh, acrylic paints using rubber stamps. Mm -hmm. And then somebody just asked what that paper was underneath your plate that you're rolling your roller out on. Is that any special kind of white paper? No, no, it's it's not. It's not. It's just one of those giant rolls of white. Uh, construction paper that mm -hmm. I buy that I use a lot for when I'm doing lives or videos or things like that. Okay. So this is this is why I did that texture on there so that you can still slightly see the layer underneath. And if you wanted to, you could continue adding more layers on top as well. Shall we risk it and do one more layer? I think let's risk it and do one more layer. Because then I can show you how you even you can get like a sharp contrast with a third layer as well without making it look too muddy. So the key is just to work in, in layers. 
know it's a bit too much paint on there, but what I have here is just some uh, circles that I've cut out using some uh, plastic plastic sheets. And I'm just placing them here and there. And that's going to create like a negative space. So the paint that's underneath these circles won't transfer, but that will allow the layers that I have already have on the print to shine or show through underneath. So this way you just you can just keep building up layers as as long as you sort of think about how opaque your paints are or how you can create more space in them so that the layers underneath show through. So Tanya, I just want to give you a time check. It We have seven minutes. <laughs> time flies, doesn't it? Yes, so this, that's beautiful. This, this, is, this is how, you know, I did go for a third layer as well, but now you can see the colors underneath of the other layers as well. You can see some of the greens as well, as well as the blue. And I'm not too worried about, you know, the borders because the, I'm not going to use this print as is. This is going to be used to, you know, get chopped up. So this has a little bit too much paint on there. Actually, I can pull another print because these were plastic. So the paint underneath isn't 100% dry. So I will be able to get second generation. Tanya, somebody's asking, where can they follow you? Oh, you can follow me on uh, Instagram. So it's my name that's come up, uh, Tanya Ahmed, that you can see in the, uh, in the video. So if you just search for that, I am the first result that comes up. So it's, it's at Tanya Ahmed. T A N I A A H N E D. Oh my goodness, guys. Bonus print. Look at that one. Don't you just love happy accidents? This is what the positive looked like, and this is what the negative looked like. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that. So because the circles that I used that were cut out were made of plastic, I was able to have these, that, that paint was left on the gel plate and I was able to lift it up. So then what you can do is you can uh, chop this up and make your own little tree silhouette as well. Let's create quickly create it. And so while I look at the questions, I have stamps I have used on the plate that I cannot get the acrylic paint off of. What kind of stamps are they? What are these stamps made of? Are they made of um, photopolymer or just acrylic? Because if the stamps are just made of acrylic, clear acrylic, then they can be hard to clean. But you can just use a soft toothbrush to clean them off. Um, if they are red rubber, then they should be really easy to clean as well. If they're red rubber stamps, then I would recommend uh, you can soak those in the Murphy's oil. But do be careful because sometimes they come with the foam backing that can be affected by being soaked. So generally, I would um, I would clean my stencil, my my uh, stamps as soon as possible. Um, if you're not sure about how the paint will come off or things like that. But if it's made of something that says that it's photopolymer, 
then those kinds of stamps are very high quality and durable. If it's just an acrylic, acrylic clear acrylic stamp, then uh, I would be careful with those. But these days, even uh, technology has advanced a lot and those are quite durable as well. And okay, we have three minutes. <laughs> oh dear. So what I've done is I just quickly cut out my little tree silhouette. And then all you have to do is, which one shall we use? Let's use this one. Because why not a fruit tree? And then you can just use this as a template to create your tree. Uh, any questions? Any other questions, guys? For any of the products I've used? So again, I was using, the main product I was using was the Jalias gel printing tape. Uh, I was using the, the five by seven, five inch by seven inch gel printing tape. You can also get the eight inch by 10 inch gel tape as well as well as the mini tools, which I use to create these swirly kind of textures as well. And the paint that I used was the Liquitex Soft Body Acrylic. And most of the materials that I was using were recycled packaging. And if you have any questions, please do direct them in the chat uh, right now while we're here, or you could messages as well on our socials, on at Jelly Arts, on Instagram. We also do a lot of uh, Facebook Lives as well. And we do some fun challenges as well as giveaways on our uh, other social media platforms as well. And I, along with the other Je uh, Jelly Arts ambassadors, we create content for the YouTube channel as well which you can check out. So I'm just gonna flip this around, the, my camera around. So you can see I made my little Christmas tree shape, which you can stick down on your card. Yes, you can use recycled packaging as well. And just to show you guys some of the prints that I did, I actually really loved how this turned out. You can really see how detailed the print looked as well we did a really funky print so this was the multi-layered one and this was the bonus one that we really really loved as well so i just wanted to say thank you to everyone and a very special thank you to uh, michaels as well for letting us host a live class if you have any questions please do contact us and thank you everyone for joining and have a great day Thank you. Bye.